Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to the 11th installment in our How to Use Vim tutorial. So far, in all of the Vim tutorials, taking a look at my fancy dancy notebook here, it seems that uh, we've covered most of the basics. We've covered installing, we've covered inserting, deleting, changing, navigating, um, all of the things that you're going to need to edit any type of file in Vim. Um, however, we never have really looked at Vim from a coding approach, so we've always looked at Vim just as a text editor. However, what Vim really is, was created for was to edit code. So today we're going to look at some of the things that you can use in order to manipulate your code and easily format your code. So I have this file on my desktop right here called Hello. And of course, since this is a Vim tutorial, I'm going to right click and press Edit with Vim. And as you can see here, a GVim window pops up, which is what we've been using throughout all of our tutorials. And there's nothing inside of this hello file. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a simple Java file um, that is going to output some, some information to the user. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this public class hello, public static void main string args, System.out.println hello world. As you can see, this is our pretty standard um, Java file. So all it's going to do is it's going to output hello world to the user. Now, as you can see, there's no syntax highlighting or anything like that inside of this file. And we can actually type in colon w to save the file, and you can see that that does nothing for our syntax highlighting either. However, there is definitely more to the story than what Vim lets on. Vim has automatic syntax highlighting depending on what your language, what language you're using, rather, and it also allows for the extensibility of having some sort of add-on or plugin to add more syntax highlighting. So the syntax highlighting properties of Vim are truly endless. So how do we activate these syntax highlighting properties? Well, as you can see, our file is just called hello. If we actually save our file to be hello.java, the syntax will automatically end up highlighting. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to type colon w to write the file, and then I'm going to call it hello.java. And then once we do that, um, you can actually see on our desktop that we now have a hello.java file. And um, now if we go ahead and exit Vim and re-edit the file in Vim, you can see that our syntax highlighting has applied. So this just shows that if you're editing a Java file in Vim, it does have a Java syntax highlighting fantastic. So I also mentioned at the beginning of the videos that there's other ways to manage code in, in particular. So one of the things that uh, stands out right away because it's already highlighted is as you can see we're at the closing curly brace of our class here and it's highlighting the closing curly brace to be blue and right below the class there's the opening curly brace brace that's also highlighted blue. Well Vim in Vim you can use the percent sign which is shift 5 if you're running on an American um, QWERTY keyboard um, that actually jumps you to the matching parenthesis or bracket. So since it's highlighted blue, we know exactly what parenthesis or bracket we're going to jump to, and we can press the percent symbol, and our cursor jumps from curly brace to curly brace. Same thing happens in parameters. So we have this main here, and we can actually use these percents to jump between them. And these brackets here, the um, array brackets, these brackets surrounding the main method, and these parentheses surrounding the print line arguments. So this is definitely handy if you have some sort of long list of arguments or you want to make sure that the file is actually, or like that you're closing the class. So you go over to the opening curly brace, see which curly brace Vim is matching it with, and if it's not the curly brace that you want it to be, well, you're going to have to add another curly brace or remove one. So very handy for making sure that you have all of your opening close parentheses in check. Now another thing you can do, another thing that Vim allows you to do to actually edit syntax, is it allows you to use the left bracket and right bracket to actually indent things. So just like the D command, which is used to delete things, you can actually use the right, or not bracket, but the little pointy arrow, the, the greater than and less than signs. So the greater than and less than signs point in the direction that you will be entering, uh, indenting. So shift period is to indent to the right, and shift comma is to indent to the left. So if we go ahead and type in... Um, if we go ahead and, yes, type shift period, we notice that we um, actually get our little modifier cursor. 
So we can now specify exactly what kind of modifiers we want to put on our um, indentation. But I'm just going to press it again to say that we want to indent the whole line. And as you can see, it quickly indents the whole line. So if we actually have our cursor on this third line here and we indent it back um, using a shift comma, um, there's no problems whatsoever. Likewise, just like previously, we can go ahead and go to the beginning of the document and left indent the entire document by typing in uh, left bracket capital G. And as you can see, it, it left indents everything once. Now we can left indent, let's just say we undo that action using U, and we can go ahead and left indent everything um, uh, two times by going ahead and typing in two left bracket G. No, wait, that didn't work. Left bracket 2G? Nope. Nope. Okay, so let's just stick with left bracket G. And then we can go ahead and go down to this line, and we're going to left indent that one over. So just like every other command, um, the left bracket and right bracket for indentation do work with the modifiers and number keys. However, I don't know why I couldn't get it to work with the number keys. <laughs> Anywho, so that is just another trick of the trade. So if you're trying to actually make things pretty quick, you can go ahead and type in like, for example, three G to go to, or three capital G to go to the third line, right indent two lines under it. So we're going to type in two right bracket double, double tap. Um, alternatively, we could have typed in uh, right bracket J. So we could type in left bracket J and right bracket J. And then um, we wanna go ahead and indent this twice and then indent this one once. So as you can see, indenting is quite easy, and it's quite easy to actually retain syntax. But what if you, you're bad at indentation, let's just say, and you don't really know what exactly to indent? Um, you just, you don't have good coding style, you really want to, your code to look nice, but you don't want to do much work for it. Well, luckily, Vim has the equal sign command, which actually does some syntax highlighting, or some syntaxing, and some um, beautiful code rice, as, these, as some people like to call it. We, we wanna make our code look beautiful, and the equal sign provides proper indentation for us. So if we go on this line, and we double tap the equal sign, uh, you can see that it actually indents it to the proper location. So if we do that with all of our lines, we end up getting this beautifully formatted code, which is very handy. Um, so we don't even have to manage any sort of indentation. Vim will do it for us. And it does this using the language of semantics, so it should definitely detect how to, how to arrange your code depending on what kind of language you're using. So shorthand, we can actually take our entire document here and we can, um, we can just put in the correct indentation using lowercase gg to go to the top of the document, press the equal sign, and then press capital G to go to the bottom of the document. And as you can see, we've got proper indentation going for the entire file due to that command. Now the final thing I want to cover, just to uh, mess with uh, more coding things, is the tilde command, which is one, one button left of the number one and shift. And this actually simply changes the case of, of certain characters. Um, so if you just type in the tilde here on this S, you can see that it changes it to lowercase. So we can constantly just change the case of this specific letter. And if we hold it down on this entire line, you can see that it alters the entire line. It's kind of a cool little trick. It's kind of a cool little tool. Uh, but it's also very useful if you're working with variables while programming and you miscapitalize um, some. So with all of this combined, you can definitely easily create some sort of file um, containing code. So let's go ahead and jump through creating um, more and putting it in our main method. So we're going to type double D to delete this line and press lowercase O to open a new line. And then we're gonna go ahead and just type a bunch, a bunch of improperly formatted statements. So I'm going to go ahead and say int five equal to five. Um, and we're actually going to left indent this way too much. <laughs> and then we're going to say int seven equal to seven. And then we're going to say in sum equal to five plus seven and then we're going to system dot out dot print line sum and as you can see this file definitely does not look very pretty so we can go ahead and use our 
lowercase gg equal sign capital G, and then it automatically indents things for us. And we have this line that's empty, white space, not all that great. So we can go ahead and delete that. So as you can see, um, Vim definitely has some nice file editing properties for code. It's also a great text editor, but I just really wanted to share the specific code editing abilities with you today. So hopefully this gives you a better grasp on what you can do using Vim with your code, and hopefully you'll be able to use it with its full potential. Now, just a few little notes. First off, um, well, this small note that I actually just thought of, because of the fact that you can use parentheses to jump brackets, you can use this in combination with all of the other commands we've learned. So say we want to take this whole main block and left indent it once. You can actually type in left indent and then parentheses to left indent everything inside of these brackets. So we can do the same thing, right parentheses, uh, percent, and then we're going to go ahead and um, indent everything involving these brackets. So just like um, you use these, these tools with the directional modifiers, H, J, K, and L, you can also use them with the directional modifier that jumps from parenthesis to parenthesis. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I definitely hope that you've deemed it useful. Um, I definitely, GG equals G, I like to call it, is definitely my favorite command um, to automatically correct all of the indentation errors that you have. And if you're ever feeling a day of laziness while coding, you can definitely just let Vim take care of the indentation for you. So thanks again for watching this tutorial. In the next Vim tutorial, I'm going to cover colon commands, especially those involving the customization of Vim. And in the following tutorial, I will cover editing your Vim RC to make your, uh, your customization and changes permanent. And then that will go ahead and wrap up the Vim series. So there you go. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you in future videos. Peace.